Hey there, lovely soul, and welcome to this video for the full moon. Here today, as I'm recording this, it is the 28th. It is, oh wow, look at that. It's 221, almost 222 here on the 28th. This has been kind of a long time coming with this video. I've been working on setting up my my videos, I have two cameras here. So I have my card camera so we can really get a good look at my cards and me shuffling and the setup here and also my main camera here. Um, so this has, like I said, this has been um, something I've been working on for the last day, trying to set up video and audio and I'm having sinking, um, sinking issues with the audio and the video. So I've had to change my preferred idea which was having a a picture in picture kind of thing so the main the main camera here being the main the main uh video with the the camera or the the card camera being in the corner however the program that i use for that is i guess just having a hard time keeping everything situated i'm sure it's because of my relic dinosaur of a mac uh macbook that i have so what we're doing now is i've shifted so i can move on with my life <laughs> and i've shifted this so we have it um we have a side by side view here so i'm actually going to be uploading a separate video with just the main camera and also a separate video with just this uh camera video as well so anyway without further ado let's get into this i hope you like the new setup i hope that this sound works for you i'm going to try to keep my my face not too close and not too far away from the the microphone um and we are going to be getting into our full moon readings now this is very different than what i've done before and something that has that came to me kind of a little fluttering butterfly about do, working with birthdays or or numbers and dates and stuff and it just didn't quite hit until um these last couple days and so what we're going to be doing is going by your birthday so if your birthday is between the first and the fifth that first reading is for you the sixth through the uh, 11th then the 12th through the 16th the 17th through the 21st the 22nd through the 26th and then the 27th through the 31st so we have six reads i will be doing um a couple of other ones but we are going to be doing this one first and each of these six readings will incorporate some different cards um i have dragon fey uh sacred geometry archangel oracle i have archetypes hidden worlds um and then we are going to get into um for sure what we're going to be using is the moonology uh and light seers tarot and the dreams of gaia tarot so um Next, I want to get into what this full moon is all about. And right off the top, I want to send you over to Tanya Gabrielle. She is a astro numerologist. So she combines astrology with numerology, which is super awesome. And I highly recommend subscribing to her and watching all of her videos. But um, definitely go and watch the video about the full moon if you haven't already. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on with this full moon in um in libra where when where their sun is in aries both are at eight at eight degrees and um so of course they need to be at the same the same degree to 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 have the sun directly behind the moon to illuminate the moon perfectly for the full moon but then there's also a lot of other things going on um with our planets with the in in eight degrees so we have a stellium happening but again i don't want to take up time in this video um 
uh, trying to describe or or get into that because it's really her Tanya's thing and again I just really really encourage you to watch her video on the full moon for um for all of that information but the eights the infinity um symbol takes a a front and center uh um center stage there because everything is with the eights with the infinity symbol with um getting into the energy of our infinite nature connecting with our souls being strong in that energy being in that that zero point of the infinity symbol and having that balance and so really the beginning of this year has been about stabilizing and getting a nice solid firm smooth foundation for ourselves and sifting out anything that doesn't belong and getting things in a in a way that keeps us and gets us stable gets us into a place where we can receive we can connect we can heal we can make connections in our lives so we can put things together for myself this month it's been a lot of clearing out space and energies that pull from me and then also connecting deeply with the akashic records with my past lives and and going into very deep healing for myself so i can um really kind of solidify things moving forward and i know that that's been um maybe not the exact theme for theme for everybody but it's been about let's get things more stable let's find a peace let's let's really bring in our authenticity authenticity and tap into what makes us tick what fuels our fire what are our passions who are we what needs to be healed what are we in fear of what holds us back like all of these things all of these components that that make for a bumpy road and then what do we need to smooth that this um full moon i started feeling with the past full with our last full moon um honestly literally and i talked about this full moon and this chunk of time between the last full moon and this full moon being really really intense very pivotal a lot of big changes and revelations and and stuff coming up in this time period and boy yes it's definitely been that for us so um so anyway without further ado i want to get into the readings um hey there and thank you for joining me for this reading i'm really really excited about it we're going to be getting into our birthdays for the 12th through the 16th. So if your birthday falls between the 12th and the 16th, this reading is for you. Of course, you could be watching this for somebody else's birthday being between, <coughs> excuse me, the 12th and the 16th. And if so, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see what we get here first with our Moonology card to kick off the read and there we go a time to breathe out a time to breathe out a time to breathe out <sighs> Um, oh, sorry. Take time to breathe out. Sorry. Take time to breathe out. Not a time to breathe out. <clears throat> little bit different there. Take time to breathe out. So busy, busy body. I'm hearing busy, busy body. Um, and... I'm hearing go, 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 doing a lot. We got our first card from our uh, Dreams of Gaia 
This is the eight of uh, water, the eight of water coming out first. Love that card. Okay, next two cards. The destiny. So let me situate this better here. These cards are very shiny. So first card out, eight of water. Second card out, destiny hour this is our major arcana and this deck just so you know is very different set up very differently than regular tarot so <clears throat> i'm not even going to be like it's normally this card and this is normally this it's just i tried to to, to learn it that way but it just doesn't drive um and then next we have um king of earth really really intense energies to start off here wow so eight of cups the destiny card the king of earth card let's see what we get next we have been doing the four of these and then four of the lights whoa okay <clears throat> the child Interesting. Oh, I didn't put that card away from. Oh my goodness. Oh, and you're starting to get hot. Oh, wow. This was from our last read. And I had it way too close to the flame. Oh God. Where is this deck? Wow. I thought I picked up all the cards because it was not supposed to sit there for so long. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. Um, so take time to breathe out is what we started with here. Then we have the eight of cups, destiny, king of earth, and the child. Okay. So we're going to do what we have done, um, with the other reads is just go one by one here and get a little snippet of what these cards are are talking about um i am picking up on some stuff my head is getting like my ears are starting to get really they get like pressure and full i might start yawning here as as info starts to come in as we get into the uh where is water i thought it was at the end yeah it is okay <laughs> i was like there we go. Eight of water, gratitude, appreciation, delight, joyfulness, happiness, positivity, pride, harmony. Key phrases, a positive state of appreciation, the attitude of gratitude, create a positive environment, be prideful, not boastful, uh, cherish what you have now. If you already, if you are already unhappy, more will not make you happier. <coughs> Focus on all that is good in your life. Question an unnecessary desire for more. Um, the eight of water symbolizes how a positive state of appreciation and gratitude can influence our lives and environment for the better. When you make a conscious choice to take pride in all that you do and appreciate all that you have, you open yourself to more good vibrations and more reasons to be happy. It is important to approach life with delight and joy, to take time to laugh at life and at yourself if need be. It might be unrealistic to hope to be happy all the time, but by taking this, the time to appreciate the people and beauty and the abundance in our lives, we create moments when our happiness is deeper and more enduring. We create ease. By choosing to focus on all that is good in our lives, we will create a positive emotional two-way energy flow that, like water, finds its way into every crack where it washes away cynicism, uh, criticism, confusion, conflict, and anything else that may be weighing us down. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm getting stuff coming in. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to stop because it's that's what it's telling me to do. We have the next one is uh, card number 16, Destiny. Wow. Did I almost 
Wow, almost went right to it. <laughs> Personal destiny, universal destiny, seeking answers, purpose, quest. Key phrases, your destiny is to become whole and connected. Your destiny is to lead a life with meaning and purpose. Step inside and explore heart and mind. Discover your gifts and talent. Uh, a sense of purpose and confidence. Ancestral healing may be required. Break the chain. Remember your dreams. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Sometimes the most important destiny remains hidden. Your destiny may influence generations to come. Overcome the trials and obstacles. Oh, I love this card. Okay, the destiny card represents the eighth reason for being. And again, here's an here is um well, we have the number eight with with want with the eight of water, but it being that it's talking about the eighth reason of being being destiny. And like I said in the beginning of this video, or the yeah, in the beginning, there is um this whole thing with the eights and this full moon energy and this whole end of the month, beginning of the month business happening. Okay, the destiny card represents the eighth, eighth reason for being, to embrace your destiny. Your destiny is twofold. You have an, a universal destiny and potential de and a personal destiny. A universal destiny and a personal destiny. Um, let me get that a little bit closer so you guys can see. And I also encourage you to just look it up online. Uh, the... 14 card the destiny card of the dreams of gaia tarot uh your universal destiny is to become whole and connected to find your center to overcome all that destroys your peace to face your fears like go of hurts and love yourself and your life with unreserved delight you also have a personal destiny, and that destiny involves seeking and following your bliss. Your destiny is to find, <coughs> excuse me, find and lead a, your destiny. <laughs> Let me start this over. Your destiny is to find and lead a life that has meaning and purpose, but your destiny is not going to be found out there in the world you must step inside and explore your heart and mind your destiny is not predetermined it is a choice uh you will make based on your inherent gifts and talents to meet your destiny you must first discover and recognize that those gifts and talents are and what those gifts and talents are and then work to use them for the benefit of yourself and others to know you have a destiny or multiple multiple destinies can give a sense of purpose and confidence it can bring you joy peace and fulfillment however your destiny towards meeting your sorry your journey towards meeting your destiny can be full of obstacles and trials like the quests of old, this is your quest, but instead of seeking an, intag <clears throat> an intangible holy grail, you move towards something tangible and real. There are activities and interests that inspire your passion and love that make you feel complete and imbue you with a sense of rightness. It is these things that you are destined to do. It could be gardening. It could be painting. It could be fixing broken things and repurposing them. It could be healing. It could be protection. It could be anything. But the key to recognizing it is how it makes you feel and what you are willing to do in order to to make it a key part of your life you are never too old or too young to seek your divine purpose oh and that gets me a little emotional because it's so like deep <laughs> destiny is deep what you're meant to do what we're meant to do what what fuels our fire what what is the what is the oh, yeah i forgot i'm thinking the inner child and there there we are what is at the center with our inner child that came into this life that came into this 
into this, you know, for beingness. And... Let's create from that from there. And that is the last card. We skipped one, but I was thinking and th I, that's all I saw was this child. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm gonna pa I'm gonna pause right here and go to the king of Earth because we're being guided there before I continue. <clears throat> okay. Uh, virile, successful, industrious, devoted, steadfast, authoritative, reliable, and dedicated. Take pride in accomplishments. Pay it forward. Honor your process. Now is not the time to make changes. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Free yourself from control. Don't be lazy. Abuse or misuse of power. The king of earth is a very satisfied man and he has every reason to be. Everything he touches turns to gold. His kingdom is secure and wealthy and his people are happy and prosperous. While some may consider that his circumstances are born of luck, he is a natural leader and his successes are born of hard work and dedication. He is proud of his accomplishments and is not afraid of to acknowledge them and, more importantly, to enjoy them. However, despite any appearance of excess, he is very grounded and realistic and enjoys abundance because he is wise and careful. The king of earth is not afraid to be open or candid because he has no insecurities or emotional baggage to feed doubts and fears. He is only too willing to share in his success and give advice and guidance without hesitation when asked. He does not fear that doing so will give rise to a competitor or rival. He believes that everyone is entitled to the same opportunities. Okay, so... So let me just take a moment here. Oh, wow. This is so intense, you guys. <clears throat> so intense with this energy, with these energies. So I'm really feeling here that, that I'm going to say we, cause I'm part, I'm born on the 13th. So, um, I'm going to say we with this one, that that was my human birthing day was the 13th of December. And, um, and so that is important to me. My, my spirit birthday was the 17th. So I'm also going to feel very connected to that. And maybe you have a spirit birthday. If that means something to you, um, great. If it doesn't, you're like, I only have one birthday. That's your birthday. <laughs> I have two. I have my my human birthing birthday and I have my spirit birthday when it was this major acceptance download that I am this this person, this healer, this guide, this shaman, this mystic, this you know uh angelic incarnate, this healer, this you know everything and all of these things came and clicked together. That's the day that I um, that I also got my spirit name of infinity. So that's an important day for me, the 17th. It's also one in seven is eight. Just so happens to end up that way. But anyhow, so this, I'm going to say we, I'm going to say we with this reading because I am part of this reading. I feel very connected to it. Um, so there's been a lot of growth, healing, understanding here of our vibration, what that means to us in the world, um, in our bodies, in our abundance, in our, in the vibe, in our home, whoever resides there with you, um, whether it's other people or animals or a combination, uh, what goes on, I'm sorry about that, what goes on here, what goes on here, what goes on here, all of this energy and how that projects itself and in, in like a cascade, like 
like the you know like a shower of water going over everything that it touches and what then rises from that and with this card we're being told that our um, positive energy our releasement of negativity the way that we don't let things sit and fester how we're honest with ourselves how we are patient with ourselves and others what we communicate out how we you know what we see how we've connected to um, our guides and our guardians and all that um, has brought us to a place where we are really I mean with this destiny card it's saying we are we're really in a place to to really start stepping in greater and greater in with our destiny this king of earth is saying that we've learned a lot so far we've figured out that you know the the balance of of being um magical and being grounded at the same time um of working and dealing with a lot of different types of individuals and situations and that each time we've each time mean, each time um we've had a new experience a new interaction a new a new uh a new A new situation yeah these two coming in together a lot here with this message and it's like it's but what, what I'm hearing here is we have had these situations in which they've been intense with other people um, we've done intense work with ourselves with other people um we have had a different experiences we've connected in a lot of really deep ways uh with other people and as we've gone on our journey we have really tweaked along the way we are learning we're getting wiser and with each new wave that comes in for us to to ride to manage to handle we've taken the experiences of the recent past and applied and reapplied and it's like it's showing me like molding and sculpting of the outer and the inner at the same time which has brought us to this new this new place with the child and i'm being told let's get into the child here really quick <coughs> excuse me sorry about that oh there we go new beginnings innocence magic divine love trust hope forgiveness awareness potential anticipation dependency a new beginning see your potential heal emotional and psychological wounds time to play and laugh acknowledge your successes delight in the moment believe in magic laughter heals <coughs> <coughs> turn dreams into reality forgive the past reconnect with innocent pleasures put doubt aside the child stands confident, taking innocent joy and delight in her connections with the world in which she dwells. She is untouched by fear and full of hope and trust. Despite any hardship, struggle, and harm she has faced, she continues to see only beauty through uh, eyes bright with wonder. She sees the good in all. She is both magic and magical, an innocent soul who believes in happily ever after yes so um it I, i'm really hearing evolution um and to be proud of that evolution be proud of 
of this of this accomplishment these the this is real validation that there's been a lot of work that we've done that there's been a lot of healing that there's you know on the inner on the outer that we're we follow our guidance and that when things happen that may seem bad or negative <clears throat> wow i'm really sorry about this whole <clears throat> I I drank this I drank my green machine and it's like really thick and it's just like no matter how much water I'm drinking it's just not <laughs> just stuck um anyway that we're to really see um or that you know when bad things have happened or when seemingly bad things or negative things or things that to get in our way have happened that we have really not allowed at least in the in the recent past let's say six months six months to a year that in the last six months to a year i'm hearing that we've come a very long way in and while it hasn't been perfect and we have been triggered and we have you know been reactionary for the most part we've seen each new situation as a, a learning experience something to be wise from something to to get new perspective something to learn from that we're constantly learning and no matter what has come up against us either very um you know targeted even aggressively um, or passive aggressively or just circumstantially um, that that for the most part like the scales are really like we really for the most part there's a lot on this side that we really have for the most part handled things in the best possible way because we've been following our guidance so clearly and we've been so grateful for it. That's what is here. We've been so grateful for our guidance. We've been so open to guidance. And and we've really seen the fruits of that play out. And, and that we really need to, you know, th there's been some real big wind, some real big um, fish that has been caught, if you will, that we're like, wow, look at that. Like we can really see this for what it is and how, and how much the work that we've done allowed us to, to really level up. Um, and that we're finding ourselves in this new position. Um, and this, this here, this new beginnings, this magic and being magical and not being in fear and not having in any way a situation where we are um <clears throat> feeling like we um are in fear it's like it's like i'm seeing recently it's like recently i'm seeing a lot of different situations where it's like Or it was slow, it was short lived where it's like, oh, it's a quick trigger. And we're like, wait a minute, this is just trying to, this is one of those things that it's like, is it, am I going to allow it to, to knock me down? Am I going to allow, whoa, am I going to allow it to put me into fear or am I going to allow it to keep me in fear in any way? Am I going to rise above this? How is this going to play out? How am I going to allow it to play out? You know, that sort of thing. Um, and that we haven't been so reactionary. We've been more observational and then let things come in and then reacted. I mean, I even got for myself was like, there's a situation was like, what, what do I do here? Just wait and see what happens. Kept being the guidance. Just wait. And I would think like, should I do this? Should I do this? Nope. Just wait and see what happens. You need to wait and see what happens. <laughs> and 
because I did that, I got to see a whole lot of a situation that if I would have acted in any way, it would have been different. And I needed to see it without doing anything. So that was, that's just an example that's coming to me. Okay, we're going to start pulling cards here. <clears throat> we have the hangman underneath that eight of water. We have the seven of wands underneath destiny. We have two of pentacles underneath the king of earth. And we have the page of pentacles underneath the child. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Hangman, seven of wands, two of pentacles and page of pentacles. So let's start here with this hangman. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing patience and in waiting. And that's been another thing that we've been able to um, kind of get more comfortable with is patience and waiting and waiting to see what what comes, what plays out um, and allowing us to see from a different perspective. Uh, seven of wands underneath or with this destiny card. And <laughs> perfect. I mean, I'm hearing just like you couldn't like literally this card here with the destiny card. Um, the seven of wands really um, showing us that that's literally the work that we've done in meditation with our own um, self-healing and if we sought out other people to help us heal or that healed us um, that that really is part of our destiny and for those of us who do healing who do provide meditation for others who do open the door to the other side that that is part of our destiny so both of those things there <coughs> And that we really do help. I'm also hearing with this hangman that we also are um, helping others to transition their, their perspective. Two of Pentacles underneath the King of Earth. So this Two of Pentacles, um, just talking about, ba you know, balance and, and, authenticity and really this card always to me feels like this is when we are in that zone feeling good like dancing like nobody's watching kind of thing almost like like we're like that like i'm too sexy type of you know that's that old song i'm too sexy for my fill in the blank song it's like everything i'm too sexy for myself kind of thing it's like i'm feeling really good about where i'm at and the balance of stuff that things are coming and i'm like i can i can just move with it you know very connected um very grounded energy here and that coming in underneath the king of of earth here definitely feels like that and then we have the page of pentacles coming in um under and with this child card and seriously this is again like this is like new beginnings with intention with um with excitement with the need for you know uh this forward movement with this uh with also with abundance i'm hearing abundance is a big part of this um abundance is definitely a big part of this okay um I'm hearing what, going back to the child, uh, no matter what it is that, that, and going back to the destiny card, no matter what it is that brings us to that fiery place within, to that this is what I love to do. 
this is what makes me so happy to do. Um, so if it's cooking or gardening or painting or drawing or, or making videos or doing tarot, whatever that it is. And if it's a lot of different things, um, like it is for me and it can be overwhelming when you're like, I love to do this and I love to do this and I do love to do this. Um, it does get a little bit more complicated, um, when it comes to, uh, prioritizing and, you know, just kind of following our guidance as to what we need to do. Um, and so it's about balancing that out too. balancing that out. What are, what is at the heart of what makes us tick and what, and is that, are we in alignment here? Like, see, she's on one foot. She's all straight and center. She's holding this giant, um, pentacle here. She's the page of pentacles. So she's, she's got all this energy and she's just like, look at me. I'm like balanced. I'm, I'm grounded uh, and abundant and, um, and, and she's, you know, she's dancing too. Uh, I'm being told. If anything I'm hearing here, it's just we need to balance the stillness time, the meditative, not doing anything, taking a break. And I, for one, suck at it. My own guardian angel has told me that. And, and my guides and guardians really um, struggle with getting me to not do and to stop and to take time to take time to breathe. Um, I do, I am really great with my breathing, but breaking, stopping, slowing down, not doing, um, is probably my biggest problem. And I'm hearing that, that when you're in this energy here, um, when there is so much coming and you do feel and you know that you're working from a place and going towards and you are all about destiny that, you know, you've been through whatever this is for you, um, journey that, um, that it's almost like slowing down or breaking or not doing feels very almost off-putting. Like it, it's just like, what do I do with the energy then? <laughs> and I know that that can be the case for me, especially around full moons. Um, for sure that energy is alive and well there. Um, I'm feeling we need to get into an archetype with a place more than a tool or the self. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a place here. Um, so let's, let's get into this with our archetype Oracle. Let's get into a place here, but yeah, there's just, if anything, because they're saying, okay, now think about you and what, like, what are the biggest challenges here? And for me, yeah, that is kind of, that, that would be breaking, um, not doing, being in a state of, like, yeah, just not, not, <laughs> not doing, um, play uh without it being any kind of of work because that's the child we need to create and we need to live i'm hearing from this perspective of that inner child and and i would say if you have not done that meditation for um healing and integrating with the inner child please do so it's on my website on my podcast it's also on um on my youtube here so please um please find that that is definitely being pointed to me right now 
I'm going to be making new thumbnails for a few of my videos. Um, but I'm seeing the, the current thumbnail. Whoa, I'm seeing the current thumbnail for it now. So um, I'm being told to share that with you to please take a look at that if you've already done it. But it felt... Oh, interesting. We got the underworld. Interesting. Uh, if you've already done the, the, the inner child meditation, ask your, ask your guides if you need to do it again. It, we, you may need to do it again. It may be time to, to it may be, it may have been great the first time around, or if you don't remember it, or if it's kind of fuzzy and foggy, if you're like, I know I did it, but you need to do it again. Um, I'm being told because it's new energies, new light codes I'm hearing coming in for us with the, with this full moon and whoa, I am so butterfingers today. It is not even funny. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so new light codes coming in for us to, to receive it's i mean i almost see it like is that the full moon behind it looks like that no well it could be it could be the full moon behind her there um or it could just be like her her own essence that's that's what that's supposed to be but in any case in any event um the the energy is coming in that I'm feeling for, for everybody, but for some of us really to pay attention to our energies to balance out not only the divine feminine and the masculine, but, um, but our inner child. Because our inner child is directly related to our divine feminine and divine masculine. That's when, when we're babies and we're children, we're coming up and we're growing up. This is when we're putting together what that means. So we, so to deconstruct and reconstruct, we need to reverse engineer and go back to that, the child, the baby kind of essence that didn't really understand anything about, about those types of energies and stuff and what is it or isn't appropriate or anything like that. Okay. So the underworld, let's get into this. Um, I'm going to read directly from the book here because this is another new one to me. And so I definitely need to read from the book. 159. The underworld, the nightmare, the ordeal, the bottom. This is no time to mince words. The archetypal territory of the underworld is fraught with nightmares, suffering, and pain. It is the darkest shadow realm which we try um, vigilantly to avoid or deny at any cost. Try as we might, the darkness pulls us into its depths through disturbing dream images, unexpected accidents, illnesses, war, conflict, and ultimately death. Not visiting the underworld or denying its existence altogether is what gives it dangerous power. Uh, traversing it forces us to bow humbly to the greater forces that be while summoning the inner strength we previously underestimated. Take solace that the underworld sub subsumes everyone from time to time, making us deeper friends, more intimate partners, soldiers of light, Amid our shadowy times, facing darkness and choosing light is the most profound calling of all. And when light, bravery, depth, facing deepest fears, and when dark, denial, suppression, evil, unconsciousness, and search for images of a map of Dante's Inferno, what does the story of epic descent stir in you? Interesting. And one of the earliest stories on record is that of oh gosh, the goddess initiates descent. Turns out um, descending into the underworld is as old as time itself. There, she goes from, she uses red and um, black ink and the red is really hard to see. 
it's just it's like really really hard to read um okay so This is really interesting. Um, I feel that for for the people that this message is for, that we have a, a decent understanding of, of the light and the dark. I definitely do. I've written ebooks. I have a website. I deal with it in a, on a healing basis as a shaman and healer and mystic. So it's it's really interesting to me that this is coming up with this reading because it's talking about, you know, the experiences that we've had and taking wisdom from it and not being in fear and not being so reactionary and of course not being perfect. And, and, but I really think that this, this feels to me like it's saying you, you see it, you, you get it, but you're the one in power and and I know for myself in the <laughs> these last just four months have been just epic rounds of this going you know in different ways um underworld type energies coming in and it just like it, it's like it, this could be a tsunami but it just barely hits the ankles with like the it's like what it's actually going to what we're actually going to allow it to do to us and we literally have that power and I think that this is about really understanding and recognizing that while the underworld and dark energies and entities and and our own um, fears, illusion, shadow side, whatever, traumas and stuff can be these Godzilla type monsters for us or they can be these tiny little little nothings. And it's truly up to us to make to manage that that light and the dark and um i'm also hearing this is about great strength about knowing how strong we are um and that there has been a lot of a lot of underworld in our lifetimes and I, but that that the worst of it has come and gone and we're in a new place now and um i'm hearing get another place card so let's get another place card and let's see because it's like telling me like this is more about you know yeah we're always going to be coming up against things that are going to want to slow us down um always going to be coming up against people that are going to be in fear of us we're always going to be there's always going to be opposition and and it's like a swamp with with quicksand how um but how it has a hold on us is truly up to is truly in our control and we have the village that came up next the village so that's card is that 31? Let me look up. I'm relearning my Roman numerals with this deck. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong. 41. Uh, page number 145. with 
the village, the hometown, the family, the tribe. The village presents us with a conundrum. On one hand, it is a place that feels most like home, the place to which you can always return. Nostalgia and comfort draws us back. On the other hand, it is the very place you must leave in order to grow. Around the village, an unspoken boundary exists, one, one most villagers do not want you to cross. Though some support you Though some support you leaving, still you hear whispers of doubts as you venture beyond its borders, leaving them behind. The energy of the village is present anytime we feel restricted by a certain group, community, family, place, or ideology. It may have served us in the past, yet staying within its parameters will never satiate our thirst for life. Thank the vil village for all it has provided, knowing you will someday return. For now, the world awaits." And when light, intimate, uh, rooted, intergenerational, communal. When dark, small-minded, gossipy, trapped, restricted. The village moves with you as it, as it is more of a mindset than a physical place. And returning to the village is as important as leaving it. it. This can be thought of as... A completion or an integration of what you've learned out in the wild yeah so wow so what I am feeling with this is like we've even been in the village but the village has been taken over sorry heard something weird behind me the village has been taken over by the underworld, but then it's like rising up from that and coming into a new place. Um, and uh, this is a this is about yeah seeing. I'm just hearing see, it's about seeing and and seeing through it and seeing it for what it is not being afraid of it and finding a home in in it finding a home with the underworld um yeah finding a home with the underworld even finding a home with the village and the underworld is like these two blending together in a comfortable way that maybe we never would have thought of before, but I'm also seeing the village as, as, as it said, the, tr as a tribe. And so this, this also meaning that there are other components and people that are that with our new our new place as as this child remember that we are with those energies that are coming in that it's almost like we're all going to be like a group in the same like starting like first day of school together kind of tribe kind of energies have been working and circulating with um other people for a while now but they haven't yet really manifested on a great on a grand scale or just a little bit here and there <clears throat> so that's definitely part of this here um okay and lastly we're going to get into the hidden worlds oracle so let's get one last card here um I'm also feeling like with this village card, it's kind of like saying, yeah, we did go out. We did venture out. We found the underworld. We made it through. And now we're coming back to ourselves in a whole new way. Like now we're taking a seat at the, at the adult table. <laughs> like not that we haven't been adults. I mean, I'm nearly 50, but it's like, where we've been has been our school where we've been in just the last year two years three years four years just 
um, all, our whole lives, of course, but most recently we're talking about this underworld energy and really seeing things in a whole new way um, than we ever, ever have before and living through that living through that literally living in in like a hellish space in different ways but also recognizing that it's 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 just um it there is it isn't really hell it's just it's reality without the illusion and we're seeing through the veil to what is really real and when we see, and when we look through that it sees us and it tries to chase us away but when we stand strong and we we're firm in our power that no this is where we're meant to be because what this is our destiny to see through that veil right to see through that veil to pull the curtain apart um, from itself and to see through things that most people do not. And, and, to, and once we pull that open, what happens? It comes at us. When it's all intact and fine, we don't see it and it moves in a completely different way. That's why people have such different perspectives on reality and what is real, what isn't real, what is dark, what is light, what what you do and don't tap into. But no matter what, when you pull that apart and you see through there, it sees back at, at you. And, and, and trust me, for those of us who need to see that, who need to live in that because we um, were meant to go there and to help others through it and to help others heal from it. You know, we we have to have, have gone there ourselves. And another message here, too, for some of you would be know that this is a natural. Like you might be in the thick of this right now. I'm, I'm hearing, though, again, like, no, for the most part, it's over. But but you're maybe maybe there's still, you know, a few of you that you know, are still kind of traumatized by it. Um, it's still, you're still trying to sort it out kind of thing. Um, but just know that, it, that you can't, you can't help anybody through that unless you've gone through it yourself and recognize what that is and what that looks like and how to properly heal from certain things or, fight certain things in a very offensive way or to hide from certain things in a very offensive way always being the one in power and coming from a place of love not fear not hate not judgment just a place of love but empowered let's see what our hidden world's card is the healing temple of the lunar light Oh, love it, love it, love it. Speaking of healing and going through it, life cycles, energy, healing, communication. Perfect, perfect. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I should take a look at that. Card number 19. Okay, the healing temple of the lunar light. Life cycles, energy, healing, communication. Uh, pages 72 and 73. The cycles of the lunar being who dwell, the lunar being who dwells within the skies above this planet have great powers to help us let go, to help us revive, to help us grow, to help us celebrate, to help us heal in all of these aspects. Likewise, the lunar light heals us as newborns, then as children, as adults and old ones alike. She reflects these stages in her cycles and no matter what point we are on the wheel we find within her healing light and the waters she blesses at every stage of this cycle a sense of who we truly are and bring ourselves to a place of rest and wonder within each stage maiden mother and crone hunter father and sage all alike must enter the temple of the wisdom of our cycles 
And the temple now calls you to honor the stage of your life you are at. Each stage, stage has its challenges. And as you begin to honor where you are on the wheel, there will be a healing of energy within. The very cells within you, the DNA within those cells will, will respond to the healing light of the moon. And if you take yourself out beneath her at the stage which is calling you full moon, uh, you will begin to find a serenity and solace that the daylight cannot give you. And within those moments, if you let your gaze soften, you may set you may see revealed the healing temple of lunar light, which lies between the worlds and which is there for you to open up and allow yourself to receive their blessings. And as you receive, so shall you learn and become the healer who walks in the world and whose energy can change those about you. Illumination mantra, I will gladly enter the healing temple of lunar light, for there I will find what I have been seeking so long. Wow. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> um, again, you know, speaking to healing, speaking like what I was just saying right before um, this card came out was, you know, we cannot effectively be true healers for ourselves um, and especially others if we haven't gone through the cycles rinse wash repeat over and over again and seen different looks at same situations so we can really get a good perspective and clear out the energies that hold on to any negative charges um, and that truly is what healing is, what energy healing is. It's releasing negative energies, replacing with positive energy, and letting the body, the energy, the spirit come into balance within that. So it's like um, constantly having an inner, um, inner energy of like, uh, stormy waters, you know, big, huge waves, and it's just all over the place all of the time because there isn't a set there's more there's um too much negative in with the water of our system if you think about it that way so when we heal we're removing those uh those energies that cause um dissonance that cause the the energies to not be settled we remove those energies then the rest of the the energy can get neutral can balance out and can be serene and peaceful that's what we want to be in ourselves right inside we want to be peaceful um and so <sighs> the only way we can truly do that is by having gone and been and know the underworld and not let it swallow us up some people get swallowed up by it they're they have addictions they have chronic illnesses they are in constant state of turmoil and depression and anxiety and stress um and and they have trouble sleeping they have trouble eating they have trouble being without being in pain there's all of these indications that say they're living in an underworld existence even though it may not seem like that and trust me i've been there i was chronically ill in my life before so um i didn't understand myself i didn't understand my power my energy what i was as a natural healer as a medical medium as a psychic physical empath i had no idea and because i didn't know created a situation within and around me because i was ignorant but that is so purposeful don't get me wrong i love my story and um even though i lived in the underworld for the better part of four decades or nearly exactly four decades i should say um and even had it have experienced that in a different way since then since clearing out that energy and and moving from somebody with a chronic illness like fibromyalgia to being a healer of people who have chronic illnesses is a huge major shift and change 
And so, you know, I can, I personally can really relate to this with the underworld being and living in it and then moving out of that, but still understanding it on such a level that I can help others through it. Um, that that's the purpose of going through that. So we don't want to wash that all away. We want to honor it. And we want to understand that we are being called to the healing temple. We are being called by our moon on the full moon to connect with beautiful lunar light, to help um, continue to heal us, to continue to help us release energies that are from the past, to awaken to our um, incoming energies for from our past slash co-current lives since it's more of a web than anything linear and to allow for that to come in so as we release in this lifetime as we let go as we heal we're able to bring in more from our other lifetimes from our divine counterparts from our soul be the avatar who's getting the downloads and the information through our very dna um, from the light of the sun from the light of the moon very important components for us and um, lastly we just need to remember take time to breathe and um, take time to breathe out <sighs> take time to do what we need to do for self-care to not to be more in balance with our output and our input and and with what's going out, what's coming in, what we're doing for ourselves, what we do for others, what others do for us, what we're connected to in the world, what is our tribe, who is our tribe, what do we want our tribe to be, whether it's one or a hundred people that may be connected to us at any given time. And with that said, I want to thank you for being here for this reading. It was very deep, very meaningful. We have a lot here to work with. There's a lot coming through um, for us. And I hope this has definitely helped you, validated you, given you insight and advice for the future. And, you know, if anything, that would just be to um, follow guidance and take it slow one day at a time. We're going in the right direction. Abundance is coming in. We're starting new. We, we have a higher perspective. We're open to those higher perspectives perspectives we have gone through a lot and healed a lot and we do have a really great awareness and we just need to continue to go on our path um with with healing and connecting to our our divine counterparts all right thank you so much for being here again if you enjoyed this video please like share subscribe and leave a comment let me know how this resonated for you and how you feel about it and until next time bye for now